Hello and happy Tuesday. I am excited because next week is the launch of, here it is, put it on the side, self-promote and succeed. It's here. Um, it's a big book. It's a big book packed with book marketing tips, strategy, tactics. I am really excited for you all to get your copy next week. So October 3rd is the launch date. We have some awesome, awesome launch incentives, which we will be posting everywhere on October 3rd, um, buying one, three, or 10 books. Um, 10 books gets you access to our foundation library, which is a huge database of videos and templates for everything from writing your book all the way through to um, mar marketing it with media kit templates, um, ask letters, uh, influencer outreach, pitch templates, the nine years. So it's pretty awesome. It's something that we've only ever made available to our clients as part of their whole service with us. And uh, buying 10 books will get you access to that for three months. So pretty phenomenal um, bonus that my team came up with for you all for that launch. So that's exciting, um, but we'll have details for you on that next week. You're welcome to grab your copies now if you are excited and you want to get them shipped out the minute that the book launches, you can do that. Uh, we will honor any receipts up until I believe October 10th is going to be the deadline for those cool launch incentives. So anyways, today we're talking about Dibley Create. And I saw I saw JP being like AI, keep AI out of art, art, hard, hard pass. And I get that. I get that AI is controversial and a lot of people have some issues with it. I personally love it as a tool to uh, avoid the blank page, help brainstorm, come up with I, uh, ideas. I heard an analogy the other day, and I wish I could remember who said it. Um, I would give them credit if I could, but they talked about it being a co-pilot, not the pilot. They don't land the plane. AI does not land the plane. <laughs> Actually, I mean, <laughs> I think AI can land planes now, but in this case, a lot of these assistant, uh, these tools that are assisting us are helping us as a co-pilot we're still the pilot. We're still we're still in charge, um, and you know. Also, as we've talked about extensively here, AI is not the thing that I recommend you use to write your book for so many reasons. Um, you know, the the not the least of which, but one of the biggest reasons is all of the disclosures, all of the copyright potential issues. There's so many potential issues with it, um, and if you do use it to write your book. Uh, plan to edit it extensively in order to make it human. Um, but, you know, the other issue is that most stuff, when, when AI writes it, it immediately is apparent to me that AI has written it. Now, Deadly Create is not just an AI tool, though. It is software to help you write your book. And if you remember, it was actually around this time last year, I was really excited about Atticus, um, some new software that was coming online. And, and Atticus is still great as far as creating layouts go. Um, but I found, and I did a video on it, and I talked about the, the, the great things about Atticus and the limitations of writing your book with Atticus. And as a company at Book Launchers, we were hoping to roll out Atticus to all of our clients and use it to write the book. And the, one of the reasons we were most excited about it was draft like version control and the ability to turn on and off access for different people. Because one of the things that's risky for authors is when you send your book to an editor, Let's imagine you've just paid an editor $3,000 and they're working on your book and 80% of the way through, they ghost you. Who knows why? Maybe something tragic happened in their world or maybe they've just given up on the project or, you know, there's, there's so many things that can happen and it has happened to us in our projects in the past. Um, we've also had people think they sent the latest version through, but they actually resent an old version. We go ahead and edit, update the, the version that they sent through. Turns out it wasn't the updated version. So a whole bunch of work has to be redone. And some of this gets prevented with tools like Google Sheets or um, like using Google Docs and things like that. But Google Docs also have challenges when it comes to um, when it comes to you know transferring it over to layout and all of those things. So for Atticus, I was really excited because we would have some really great version control. And it had some, and it had collabor It was supposed to have collaboration tools and some other pieces. It still has not gotten those updates. Um, I think that they have focused on creating it as a great layout tool, and you know it works really wonderfully for simple layouts. And I think there's, the, you know, I still think the software has massive potential. But that's why I'm so excited about Dibley Create is because it has these features. 
It also has a really cool little AI dude called Kip, um, who I'll show you in a minute, who can help you with outlining, brainstorming ideas. And Kip is right there and you can turn Kip off. So if you're anti-AI, um, that's a-okay. You don't have to have this AI functionality built into this software. Um, so it's pretty cool. I, I'm really happy with it. We're, we're beta testing it right now. Uh, they did a soft launch a few weeks ago and um, we haven't rolled this out with all our clients, but um, it's on my team's plate to assess. And I think there's a very, very good chance that we're going to be using this, uh, especially as they develop the tool. So anyways, that's what we're talking about today. Um, let's see. So JP's in the house. I already kind of said hello. Um, Kal Kalila, Kalila, um, hand pink waving, it says. <laughs> Efren's here and Suzanne. Um, St. John Butler, hello, and Angela's here as always. Our operations manager is here to support and make sure that you get your prizes because if you are new to the scene, um, when you comment the day a video is released every Tuesday and Friday, you get entered to win some prizes as well as being here today and participating also gets you prizes. And, um, and then uh, Lakeisha's here as well. And uh, Suzanne Dibley Create, you probably spelt it wrong. Angela can drop the link in the chat for you all to start checking it out and I'll take you on a tour shortly. A um, couple of key dates to put in your calendar. Uh, October, hold on, let me just make sure I give you the right date. Our next deep dive um, is going to be on October 21st. This is going to be with Dan Good, our manager of manuscript development. And he is going to be prepping you for NaNoWriMo. So if you aren't familiar, NaNoWriMo is actually like National Novel Writing Month, but you could argue it's National Nonfiction Writing Month. And so to prep you, he's going to host a session to help you outline, talk about your hook, your reader, and get you prepped so that you are ready to write your book in a month in November. So uh, that should be a really, really great deep dive session for anybody who is interested in you know, challenging yourself to get a first draft done in the month of November. So mark your calendar, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, as always. I don't have a link for you to register yet, I don't think. Um, Angela, I don't know if you've set up, set up the Zoom link and all that fun stuff for uh, that deep dive yet. But as always, um, once it is set up, you will find it at booklaunchers.com forward slash deep dive. So you can always check back there. Um, maybe Angela will tell you even what day you'll be able to register and get that on. But in the meantime, you can get that on your calendar. And then of course, October 3rd, that is the launch day of self-promote and succeed, the follow-up to self-publish and succeed. So um, those are the two big dates for you to note right now. And, uh, and with that in mind, let's just dive into Dibley Create. Okay, um, and if you have questions, if you're new here, you can go ahead and post your questions at any time. Angela collects them and uh, we will have time at the end because I'm not going to spend a ton of time in Dibley Create. I just wanted you guys to know about it because it's really cool. And let's see. Sure. Oh, I got to change my view. One moment. Now, here we go. Okay. And share screen. Oh, and by the way, if you missed the deep dive last a couple weeks ago, it was posted to booklaunchers.tv. And you know what, I'm going to do a draw right now since I've got I see the screen right here, I'm going to do it. So this is our every Tuesday. And there we go. Every Tuesday and Friday, uh, we collect all your names of all you fabulous folks that comment on all the videos. And they're all in here. And we will give prizes away. And you have four prizes to choose from today. You have the mug, which I still have to replace. Angela, can you please remind me to bring a mug from home to my office so I have it here? Our, our oh so soft journal and your choice of self promote and succeed the new book or self publish and succeed uh, the original, the how to write a book. So of course, if you haven't read how to write a hashtag no boring book, self-publish and succeed. That would be the book to start with because self-promote and succeed references it a lot. All right. So those are your four prizes today. And by the way, um, I will also be, I produced the audiobook. Uh, I, I produced, I'm in the, pro, the process of producing the audiobook. I, I recorded myself reading the audiobook and I'm going to set it up so that you can get it for free. Um, on YouTube. So you won't have to buy the audiobook. 
um, you can listen to it on YouTube or you can watch it. <laughs> um, my editor is actually doing a really great job. I thought it was going to be so boring. I was like, who will ever want to watch this video as I'm just sitting here reading the audiobook? But they've actually done a really wonderful job. I still don't think it would be something I would watch for hours on end. But, you know, it's designed so that you don't really have to watch it. You can you can just listen to it. And it's the book. Uh, it's the book on video. And uh, and so I'll be giving that to you free. It's in celebration of 50,000 subscribers and all and really just you know my way of giving back to the community that has been so good to me. Uh, it will be an opt in. So you will have to opt in to get access so that we aren't distributing the links to everybody. Uh, out there in the world. But um, yeah, so FYI, we'll have details on that in the next week as well for the audio version of it. But you can, if you want that, you can always buy copies, give your copies to your friends and watch slash listen to the videos. All right, so congratulations, Mike Cook. Um, you were the first person in our uh, Tuesday, Friday draw today. So thank you so much for your comments. You'll need to email Angela at team at booklaunchers.com and let her know what prize you want and where to send it. All right, where's my button? Where's my button? Oh, there it is. Now pick. I'm just doing both of them right now since I'm in here. And next one, Emily Romero. Congratulations. You are our second prize winner of today. Thank you for your comments. Same thing. Email Angela. Let her know which of the four prizes you want and where to send them. Okay. So now um, I have to stop sharing this screen and then I will head on over. Um, I will head on over to Dibley Create again. So here we go. And there it is. I was like, why can't I find it? But it was under example. Okay, so Dibley Create, like I said, this is a new software program. It's still, it's only, they've only had a soft launch. So it's not out really widely. It's soft launched a couple weeks ago. So when you arrive, um, it's got a dashboard, which is kind of cool. And, uh, and it, allows you to create different projects. One of the really neat things here is you can upload your manuscript. So um, self promote and succeed, we uploaded it here. And when you're in here, you can then so it's got all the stuff here. There it is. So it uploaded. And now if we want, we can go, okay, Kip, go ahead and give me a, uh, let's see, give me a summarize. Choose input. No, it's going to, I have to upload it again. So we did this and we got the summary from it. I don't know if it's, yeah, here we go. Summary. Um, here it is. So it provided a summary. Wasn't bad. Um, so if you want to upload other materials and get a summary, it does that. And then it creates a description. It did. Oh, there it is. I was going to say, this was all here before. It's just, I think it delayed because we're streaming while we're looking at this. So it gives you a description. It's not the description we used, but it gives you stuff to start with, which is kind of cool. So, um, so that's what, if you already have an existing book, you can use those tools. Um, so then I just created, let me see if I can get back there. Here we go. I just created a pretend project here for you all. So, uh, and so where this is Kip. This is the AI tool. So you can see this is writing. What I like is it's kind of like Scrivener. You can create your chapters, move them around, you know, just like just like in Scrivener, um, which was one of the things I loved about Atticus, right? I could create chapter by chapter and move it around. Um, and it still functions like a Word document. And it gives you word count up here for each of those. And it gives you other tools as well. So if you're collaborating, you can view the comments and then this I believe that allows you to lock it out if you have collaborators. Um, here's where, JP, you can disable Kip. If you don't want AI, he said, keep AI out of my art. So there you go. Um, okay, so Kip, let's see what Kip can do. So an outline, generate an effective outline. So here's the audience types that you've got. So children, teenagers, adults, seniors, men, women, young adults. So let's say we're writing a book, nonfiction, they have other types. I think they can do fiction or nonfiction. So I want fiction or sorry, I want nonfiction. I'm going to do 15 chapters and number of words. I'm going to do, let's say 50,000 words. Let's just go book title. Um, give me a book title. Let me, let's, let's see what you guys have got for me. What, what book title should we just throw in there? Give me something slightly silly. <laughs> let's have some fun with this, shall we? Um, let's see. 
And it looks like Carrie was asking for dates and Angela hit her up with those dates. So that's awesome. And Carrie, that is a great session. I mean, it's kind of a repeat of what you've already been doing in Self-Publish and Succeed Live, but it will be a really great, that, that deep dive session will be a great one for everyone that's in the class to kind of just emphasize what we're doing and give you some more, um, you know, a little bit of more support with Dan in particular. Um, okay, let's see, very intriguing tool mislabeled. <laughs> you want me to play down that, that road? I could go down that road. We need more, we need more of a more title than that, but we could put that in and um, here we go. How to find a great roommate. Let's play with that, Tony. That'll be fun. <laughs> That'll be a fun little version. Thank you for that. Okay. How to find a great roommate. Here we go. Um, genre, this would, I don't know if that would be self-help. <laughs> uh, we'll call it self-help for now. Main topic, the art of finding someone that will keep the house clean, not eat your food, and be fun to hang out with on weekends while they pay half of the rent explanation of the book. I kind of just wrote that out there, but this is about finding a great person to share in the burden of co the cost of living burden. We have to consider that we're, we're taking into consideration safety, um, compatibility, and, um, personality types. Where do you find the people, the person, I should say? How do you screen them? <laughs> and what do you do contract-wise? Okay, let's see what it comes up with. It can take up to 10 minutes. So uh, let's see what questions we have while we wait for Dibley Create to come up with something. Um, let's go back here. AI for president. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, okay, um, let's see. I see a question from Nick. What if we don't have any idea on which we can write a book? Ask, ask AI. <laughs> I mean, honestly, so what you could do, I'm just playing with this. I haven't done it um, because I have an endless assortment of ideas of things that could be books in my head. Um, but what you could do is you could ask AI, you could tell AI, and I probably wouldn't use Kip. I would probably use something like ChatGPT. But you could go in and tell ChatGPT a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, you could even potentially copy paste your resume, copy paste um, an article if there's been an article about you, and just ask like, what might make a book, uh, a book that people would be interested in, that is, um, you know, that would help X kind of audience, or what could you write that would do this? Uh, you know, most people do have a book idea. Um, you could. The other thing is I would just ask friends or family or colleagues, um, if I wrote a book, what would you be interested in hearing about from me? Or what would you learn about from me? Or just look at what people always ask you for help about. Um, you know, also bigger picture goals. If you want to be a speaker, what do you want to speak about? If you have a business idea, what, what's that business idea? So, okay, let's, Dibley is done. So let's see. Um, I mean, talk about detailed outline here, right? This is intense. Um, and it's not bad. Like I'm not gonna, we're not gonna spend hours reading all of this, but look at chapter eight, maintaining cleanliness and organization. Summary of what will be discussed. This chapter will provide tips for ensuring a clean and organized living space. Wait, let me put on my audiobook voice for you. <clears throat> it will cover various aspects of cleanliness and organization, including setting up a cleaning schedule and responsibilities, organizing shared spaces for optimal functionality, and addressing issues of personal hygiene and cleanliness habits. <laughs> That's my audiobook voice, although it is a little slower than that. When you're reading an audiobook, you have to go a little slower. You cannot be the highly caffeinated <laughs> version of me that tends to show up on these live streams in my videos. So let me try some of the sub points for you with my audiobook voice on. Sub points, setting up a cleaning schedule and responsibilities. This section will discuss the importance of establishing a regular cleaning schedule and assigning specific cleaning responsibilities to each roommate. It will provide tips on how to create a fair and effective cleaning routine that ensures the share, and I have to pause and wait, so I give space for my editor to go back, go back in. Anyways, you get the picture. So this is pretty darn good. 
you would not. Going to JP's point that AI should stay out of my this is going to be really boring, okay? This thing will be informative, but it's going to be a snooze fest if you don't dive in and add personality and personal stories and opinions. But if you're staring at a blank page going, what am I going to write about? Or what could I possibly say about this topic? I mean, wow, this is robust. If, you know, I think this is pretty fantastic. And screening potential roommates, conducting phone interview, um, meeting potential roommates, performing background checks. This is pretty solid information to get started. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of creepy. I get that. But I mean, I'm looking at this as efficiency tools, the opportunity to save time, even write a better book. Because how many times, you know, for those of us who've written books, how many times have you finished the darn book and then gone, oh my gosh, I did not write a chapter on X. How could I have forgotten something so obvious? <laughs> I've done it on every book. So um, something like this would help me because it would help me think through things in an even more thorough manner, um, especially if you have that quick start, you know, high D, if you know the disc, the disc um, profile, if you have that high D personality like I do, I tend to just jump in. And then, you know, I have fabulous people like Angela that I, I always say they're there to clean up my messes because I just jump in. But, you know, something like this doesn't take me that much time. So I would be OK using this and it will help me slow down enough to discover things that I you know, should be including. Um, I don't know. One sec. I'm just going to click on this. So for each of these, they don't tie back. So um, it's not related. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Come on. Come on back. Kip. So it's not related to this outline. Um, one thing I probably will suggest to them is when it's inside of a project that you be able to like have all of this be related to the same book. So for the outline to then carry it over to write a sample description and for that to give you research. So, um, but let's take this research over here and let's see, is it gonna, let's just type in how to find a great roommate. And so you can see what it's gonna do for research. And so if you're just tuning in to this and you're wondering, what are we doing? We're looking at Dibley Create, which is a new software tool to help you write your book. It's got great collaboration and AI features that you can turn on and off. Um, and so Angel has been putting the link in there if you want to check it out yourself. Um, so you could search Amazon. I think that's the only choice they have right now, but they are planning to add others. And let's see, articles. Let's see what we're going to find here. May take up to 10 minutes. All right, I'll come back over. Let's see what we're talking about. Um, okay, Carrie says, does it check databases and warn of similar books out there? Uh, <laughs> thanks for my audiobook performance. I had a little bit of practice recently. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this one I don't think it does, but that's where I really love Rocket. Um, and it probably will do something. We'll see what it comes back with on this research piece uh, because I actually haven't played too. I've played with the research piece, but in a different context. So I'm curious to see what this comes back with. But um, but I would use Rocket anyways. So I would uh, publish a Rocket, which Angela can also drop our link in there, um, book launchers forward slash Rocket. And, uh, and then that would give you the ability to, to check out competition and analyze your competition and see if it's too similar. Um, it does have a plagiarizer checker and it has, I think, an AI checker that it's coming. I haven't played with that stuff either. We have other tools that we use for AI checking and we use Grammarly largely for plagiarism checking and like the advanced uh, Grammarly tool. Um, okay, let's see. Um, because it's computer generated, it came from information already online somewhere. How can we be sure it's not plagiarism? It's an outline. Uh, and again, that's why I'm a big fan of Copilot. It's not, you don't copy paste the outline and write that book. Copy paste the outline and go, okay, this isn't what I'm going to say. This is how I'm going to do it differently. It's a starting point. So you're not staring at a blank page. Um, and then you can always, you know, in this, in this system, it doesn't give you the ability to like, okay, I didn't really like that. Can you rewrite that piece? Um, inside of your document though, what it does do, which is kind of cool is you can bring up, it's, I don't know, this is taking too long on the research piece. Uh, it's not that that's one of the least, I think, least interesting parts of their system anyways. Um, but what you can do is you can, come on, 
there we go. What you can do is um, inside of your writing, you can say, okay, rewrite this, paraphrase this, give me like, this isn't working, give me something extra, give me an example, which is kind of cool. And I showed you the summarizer for my books, we uploaded that. Um, you could create an elegant biography for the author. So you'd have to upload, this is like uh, a, a smaller version of the form we sent to our authors for their author bios, but you can upload it all here and then have it generate your own author bio. Uh, again, I would not take what they write <laughs> uh, and use it, but it gives you a first draft, which is the cool part of a lot of these things. Title generator, you can go in here and play with it. And so let's see, we'll go with self-help and see what happens. Don't know where it's taking the information from. I don't think it pulls, so I don't know if it's just going to give us titles. What did it say? Um, discover oh, current top selling book titles based on a specific category to spark your title crafting endeavors. So this doesn't brainstorm titles like ChatGPT does. It's just going to tell you the best selling titles um, in that category. So I'm not really that interested in that. I can get it. I can get that elsewhere. So the one other thing I'll show you really quick, and then we'll just focus on questions. So if you have questions of any kind, you can post those now. Uh, so if we go back to the project. So the other thing over here on this dashboard is... Um, I think I don't see it here. There was like a, maybe it's inside of the project. There's a, uh, milestones and things like that, that you can be tracking your milestones. I think it's up here. Um, okay. So let's just go to any paragraph down here and say, Kip, I need your help. Let's go. Um, okay. Let's say, here we go. Okay. Kip. Oh, an error occurred in your editor to avoid loss of work. Please refresh the page. Okay. Let's try again. I was just going to show you some of the stuff Kip can do. Okay, how can I help you with your writing? So if you're stuck on something, there you go. Um, Let's see what it does. So let's just say I accept all this. Did it go? I don't know where it went. This thing is spinning. I don't know if you see that it's spinning on me, but I don't think it likes me live streaming and using it at the same time. Let's try this again. An error occurred again. Um, so when I'm not live streaming or I'm not in front of people trying to do a demonstration, <laughs> it works really cool um, because it shows it will rewrite it and give you options. So you might have seen it. It'll be like, change this word, change this word. It'll add some text and examples. So it's like an integrated chat GPT into your document. So it just gives you some ideas and suggestions. And that is not plagiarism, right? That is like using uh, using uh, pro writing aid or Grammarly to help you with your editing and your writing. And Amazon considers that AI assisted, not AI generated. So that is totally a-okay to do with your book. If you're not happy with how a certain section reads, you know, going through there can give you ideas. So um, anyways, uh, that's it for my Dibley Create uh, demonstration, but I am pretty darn excited about this tool. I think it's got tremendous potential, which is why we're we're testing it in-house and I suspect we'll be rolling it out, probably not until next year, because we have some other cool projects that we are more focused on um, and we'll have to revise our robust process behind the scene uh, to bring that in. But I do love the control. I love the ability to, uh, you know, generate ideas and edit. But, you know, again, for us, from a business perspective, that control and document version control uh, without in without putting in a bunch of garbage that really wreaks havoc with layout, um, you know, that's pretty powerful. So. And Tony wants to write the roommate book. I know they did such a good job. You just have to throw some um, examples and stories in there of, you know, this would be, that'd be a great book for somebody who's had roommates all their life. Like, you know, you're in your, you're, you're, you're a senior and you've always had a roommate. <laughs> I think that would be great. Um, I think, I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of cool. Um, all right. I don't see any questions. You guys are going easy on me today. Maybe you were all mesmerized by the, uh, did we create demonstration? But um, if I'll just hang out for a second. Oh, we do have to do prizes for today. So people who are here participating, uh, we have our No Boring Books mug, 
and our Oso Soft Journal and copies of self-publish and succeed for you. Um, and so those three prizes are available for anybody who's here live today. And um, and sorry, I just saw Efren's question come in and I kind of touched on that, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and uh, so let's do a quick uh, skill testing question for you. And just trying to think, oh, I know, this will this will be a little tricky, but you could actually look it up if you want the answer. How many pages did I say self-promote and succeed is? Um, you don't have to get the exact number right. I'm just looking for the first, the first digit to be correct, essentially. Um, that's our skill testing question. And then today is the 26th of September. So as always, Angela, let's go 26 from the top. And, uh, and that will be our prize winner for today. Okay, so... Uh, Efren said, you were pretty excited about Atticus last year. Do you think this one is better or different? I think this is far superior from the writing side. Um, Atticus still, I, where Atticus has focused is on layout. They are still a writing tool, but as as I, in the video that I shot, which Angela, I don't know if you already grabbed the YouTube video that I did on Atticus, but you, if you haven't, please drop it in. And uh, <laughs> Carrie, high five. I actually think the exact number is 304. But 300 was the number I said at the beginning. So you crushed it. You get the prize today, my friend. Um, so email Angela, team at bookauncherist.com and let her know what kind of swag you'd like because uh, I think you've already got self, self publish and succeed. So uh, Atticus, uh, where they've really invested is on the layout side. Um, what I said in my video this year was that I was very disappointed when I wrote the book um, it had a lot of glitches because I wrote Self Promote and Succeed in Atticus. Uh, and I was excited about the things that they were going to be adding as far as collaboration and version control, which they still haven't added. They focused on the layout side of the system. And so the layout side is really good for basic layouts. Um, a gigantic book like yours, Efren, uh, would not be good for their system. It's more like for books that um, don't, like my book would probably do okay because there's almost no graphics inside, right? It's a pretty basic, um, you know, it's basically text. So that kind of a book would probably do okay or does okay in Atticus. Um, I probably wouldn't want to do a book of my size in Atticus, but you could. Um, if As soon as you get a lot of graphics or it gets complex, Atticus still doesn't perform as well as just having a designer do it. But, um, but on the writing side, they still haven't added those collaboration features. Uh, ultimately, for writing your book, I am extremely excited that Dibley has already added in the features that I have been waiting for Atticus to, to add. And it's not as glitchy as Atticus was for writing the book. Like Atticus, I would, I would copy and paste my video scripts in and then the whole thing would freeze. So I would just have to throw in random paragraph breaks so that it didn't have, because it didn't do well with big chunks of text. Um, and so it would freeze up. And then when I exported it, it was a, an unformatted block of 120,000 words because it was gigantic at that phase. So it was ugly. It was not good. Um, and Dibley is not like that. They're formatting, the headings transfer over, the um, the experience is less glitchy. Um, it's much less gl glitchy when you're not on a live stream. So I am it, uh, equally as excited about Dibley, but I'm excited about what Dibley already has versus with Atticus. I was really excited about where it was going and it still isn't there. Um, but I still think Atticus is a great tool. I just think for writing your book, um, the other piece is Atticus doesn't have any of these AI tools built in, which I think are really cool. Uh, you can turn it off, but you can turn it back on if you want it. And, uh, you know, I have Grammarly integrated into my computer system and I use it a lot. I rely on it for ideas and editing and suggestions. So I'm um, having that Dibley or that Kip um, person thing bought in your document, I think is pretty cool. Um, and then J Tony said, I'm using Scrivener to write my new book. Do you think Scrivener will introduce AI feature? They're going to have to. Uh, they're going to get left behind if they don't. Um, you know, for me, Scrivener, I, like I loved the ability to chapter your book and move the chapters around because, you know, of course, in Word, it's copy, paste, cut and paste, and it's really annoying. You can't visually see your book, which I loved about Scrivener. And I love that about Atticus, like having that toolbar on the left where you can see your chapters and see where you're at. I love that. So Dibley has that. Um, and, and Scrivener has that. Scrivener is very complex. It is not that easy to get started. Dibley's a lot more intuitive. 
I have Scrivener and I tried to use it and I had to watch like three YouTube videos on how to use it and I still didn't know how to use it. And, um, and I also didn't like, I think they fixed it now, but I really didn't like in Scrivener that I couldn't get a word count. It drove me crazy. So, um, but yeah, I, I would expect, I haven't heard anything that Scrivener is introducing AI features, but um, I would suspect they're working on it behind the scenes. They certainly should be. Um, and so Carrie, it's interesting that you ask this. So Carrie asked, do you know if either of these software programs translate to Spanish or other languages? So the interesting part is that the creators of Dibley Create, one of their, um, their early features of their business, um, they, they're formerly urban writers. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's formerly, they might still have urban writers now that I say that. They did translation. So I am almost certain if it's not built in, it's coming because that is one of the things they had in their original business was translation. And then they built a creator's um, like a, a marketplace for hiring creators and translators were one of those creators. But uh, based on, and I, I had a in-depth meeting with Marco, one of the, one of the founders of this, of this software. And I was kind of understanding some of the code and some of the logic that they used to build in this system because there's Python coding along with OpenAI. And so I was trying to understand all of the workings because I'm building some other stuff for myself. So I have some uh, some reasons why I was asking some of those questions. But um, so I don't, I don't know the specific answer to your question, Carrie, but I would almost um, be certain that that is coming. It's not there now. Um, and uh, as with anything though, any kind of translation, especially a robotic translation, if you've used any of those tools, um, it will require robust editing <laughs> post bot translation. Um, oh yeah, Suzanne said you can get a word count in Scrivener now. I figured they, I thought they had fixed it. Um, that was just such a big pet peeve for me and I knew for other authors too. So um, that's great. Um, Angela, do we have our final winner? She might still be counting. And then if we don't have any other questions, I will um, say goodbye for now, but we'll be back in two weeks and I'll probably go live on my launch date as well, but I'm not going to schedule it. Um, I will just go live and tell you about the incentives and say, hello, the book is out, all that fun stuff. So you can keep an eye on YouTube for October 3rd, because I will probably pop in to say self-promote and succeed is out. Um, I don't have the costs in front of me, Carrie, but I know neither one was very, I didn't find either cost prohibitive. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't actually remember how much Atticus was. And Dibley, I'm going to see, there's pricing rate on their website. So I'm just going to open up their website right now. And again, it's hard to compare. I mean, Scrivener, I don't, you could almost compare Scrivener to Atticus to Dibley. But again, Atticus doesn't have the same features and neither does Scrivener. So it's really kind of hard to compare because it's going to, the decision's going to come down to what is most important to you because, um, let's see, sorry, I'm just trying to find their pricing here. Uh, they have a free plan, which only gives you 10,000 tokens, which is from the open AI. So that's not a lot. Um, but it would get you started. It would allow you to play with it. And then if you want to keep it, you would go to 19, 14 a month, or um, they have, you could pay annual for that as well. So we're on a beta plan. So I haven't, I haven't bought it yet, but I'm, you know, pretty darn sure that we're going to be getting it and, you know, doing an enterprise plan with them for our clients. Uh, and Atticus, I think was 130 bucks. I think a one-time fee. So it wasn't monthly. So it has that advantage. Scrivener is, or when I bought it, it was a one-time fee as well. So that's definitely an advantage over, um, you know, having a commitment, an ongoing commitment. Uh, just depends on what's important to you, uh, what, what, what you're really looking for in a piece of software. Um, let's see. Oh, it was Carrie. You won twice. All right. So whenever somebody wins twice, uh, we will ask you to give it to somebody else. So you can, we can either run it again <laughs> uh, or you can, you can come up with a skill testing question or you can just give it to somebody who is in the chat that you want to give a prize. So you get to be Santa for the day. So go ahead, Carrie, and either ask random spin. Okay, so I'll go to my random spinner. I don't have all of you folks. Actually, the random spinners for the people who comment. I don't have the names of the people who participate today. 
So we can just do a random, just pick a random number and then Angela will um, count. <laughs> we can we can give Angela a little bit more work before we say goodbye today and we'll see um, what number. So just pick pick your favorite number and um, and then we'll I'll tell Angela where to count from. And Dylan, applying for, there's two different contests that we run. So Carrie said eight. So let's go backwards from where you told me she won twice. <laughs> backwards eight from there. And we'll see. So Dylan, there's two ways to win. So every Tuesday and Friday, a new video comes out on booklaunchers.tv. You comment the day the video is out and you get entered to win. And then we do the draws every other Tuesday here live. When you participate in the Tuesday live, you and so not just showing up because we don't get to see who the eyeballs are. We only get to see who's commenting. So participating by saying, hello, how do I apply for the contest? And, you know, chatting with each other and asking questions. You're then entering your name every time you do that. And we randomly pick them or we have skill testing questions like we did today. I asked how many pages is my new book. And I had said it at the beginning in passing and Carrie was paying attention or a good guesser. <laughs> and uh, she got the answer. So she won the prize. And then now Angela is counting for the final winner and she says she's ready. So we all just have to watch and wait for the winning. Um, so you get to win. Uh, it, it varies a little bit. Um, Tony, <laughs> Tony, what, what have you not won lately, my friend, Tony? So you're winning journal today or a mug or a copy of self publish and succeed. You can see that uh, book behind my plant. That's the book before self promote and succeed. So those were the three prizes that we had. Um, and so uh, Tony wants to give it to someone else. Okay, you got to pick somebody, Tony. <laughs> Pressure's on you. Um, and if you aren't in the United States, you get to win a book um, because shipping the other items is too, uh, the duties are sometimes far more expensive than what the item is worth. So we just ship books now. Um, so thank you, Tony. Let us know who you would like to gift your prize to. And oh, and Angela jumped in and stole it. We'll see what we'll see what Tony says. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to um, steal it from Tony. We'll let Tony pick. Um, and then yes, Dylan. So there you go, Dylan. Congratulations, you tuned in, and now you get a prize. So uh, you have to email team t e a m at booklaunchers.com and let Angela know what your prize is. So congratulations and thanks for tuning in, and hope we get to see you here again. We do this every other Tuesday. So we'll be back here in two weeks, same time, which is 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, and we'll chat again then. So thank you, everybody, for being here today. And uh, if you're checking out Dibley Create after the fact, let me know what you think. And if you have questions for future live streams, go ahead and post those below as well so that I've got topics to talk to y'all about. Okay, take care. Bye.